Soprano Sopranos? Come on, back to the top. Come on, say, let the redeemed. church won't raise our hands knowing how God brought us through see I will never be ashamed to stand up and praise his name cause when I was in sin Jesus came and took me in pinned me up turned me around placed my feet on higher ground you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me but if you got love, peace, and you've been redeemed, stand up and say, let the redeem. Oh, say, let the redeem of the Lord. Let him say, let the redeemed of the Lord. Let him say, oh, he made way. He made a way. Oh, he made a way. Oh, if you got love, peace, and you've been redeemed, stand up and say, Let the redeem. Oh, it's time for the saints to take a stand. It's time that we hold our ground. See, you can take it, but I will not. I won't take the mess the devil throws down. Because when I was in sin, Jesus came and took me in. Picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on higher ground. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. But if you got love, peace, and you've been redeemed, stand up and shout. Let the redeem. Oh, say let the redeem of the Lord, let him say, oh, let the redeem of the Lord, let him say, he made a way, oh, he made a way, I said he made a way. Oh, if you got love, peace, and you've been redeemed, stand up and say, let him say, I've been redeemed. Oh, I've been redeemed. You don't know like I know what he's put me through. Hey, I've been redeemed. Oh, say I've been redeemed. Hey, he saved my soul. And he made me whole. Hey, he set me free. Can you say that you've been redeemed? Oh, I've been redeemed. 
Hey, you change my walk. Hey, you change my talk. Oh, he changed my mind. One more time, say I'm been reading. God, I'm been reading. I proclaim today. I'm been reading. Oh, let the reading of the Lord let him say. Team of the Lord, let him say, Oh, he made a way when hope was gone. He made, Oh, he made a way. Oh, if you got love, peace, and you've been redeemed, stand up and shout, Let him say. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Are you saved? Born again? Baptized in the Holy Spirit? Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. Are you hearing the mandate? The mandate has gone out. Jesus is calling. Oh, Lord our God, creator of all things, ruler of the universe. You are omnipotent, you are omniscient, and you are unpresent, Lord God. And we, as your children who are called by your name, we come in this assembly today looking to you, looking for a touch from you as we bless you, Father. You have blessed us from the rising of the sun up until this moment, until our line down tonight. Lord, we honor you, we worship, and we adore you. The song said, let the redeemer of, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. If you're saved, you want to let the Lord know. Father, we honor you to say, have your way in this assembly this day. Because we want to be the old soldiers in your army. Because the drum is beating, the time is winding down. And we, for God, speak that word by evangelizing. But that's something that we have to do. Don't speak it, we must go. So, Father, in Jesus' name, hide me behind the cross and let the glory of God be seen, Lord God. Let your word go forth and fill each and every heart and allow those ears to hear what you are saying, Lord. Hear your drum beat. Hear your drum beat. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is good. He is good. And we like to say all the time, all the time, we see these boats over here, but I don't see the fishing rod. Oh, there they are, the fishing rod. And what is our theme today? What is the key verse? The key verse for today is coming from Matthew, yeah, yeah. chapter 4, yeah, right, right. verse 19. And what does it say? Jesus says, follow me. Do you hear him calling? He says, follow me. Follow me. And I will make you fishers a man. He said, I, you can't do nothing without him. And you have to follow him. You can't devi deviate from that straight and narrow path to follow Jesus. Amen. So he said, follow me. So let's go to the scripture reading for today. I'm going to be reading from um, Mark. Mark chapter, uh, Mark chapter 1, verses my glasses on. Verses uh, 16 through 19. The call has gone out. 
There is a mandate. Coming from whom? Jesus. Do you hear his voice? Listen to what he says, especially in 19. And starting at 16, it says, And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. What are they doing? Casting their nets into the sea. For they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Keepers, follow me. Follow me. Listen to his voice. Because he is speaking to each and every one of us. The mandate is going out. And Jesus is calling his children into that vast ocean of people who are lost, who are dying. His call is going forth. Look at someone and say, do you hear his call? He is calling you and he's calling me. And if this is what he says, follow me and I will make you become fishes of men. They immediately, they didn't think about it. They didn't say, let me go home and pray about it. Let me think about it, a lot of people like to say, for a minute. Just for a minute. But they immediately left their nets. That's profound. They didn't give it a second thought. We have all kinds of excuses. But do you hear his voice? What is he saying? Follow me. Follow me. There's a vast world out there. People are dying. People are dying. People are hurting. And the mandate is from Jesus. Do you hear his voice? Jesus is serious. It's time that we get serious. And they immediately left their nest and followed him. When he had gone a little further from there, he saw James, the son of Jebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the boat, men in their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left. Their father. They left. Didn't contemplate on anything, the father. I'm quite sure their father was dear to them. But they left their father, Jebedee, and the boat with their hired ha ha hands, with their hired servants, and went after him. You may sit down. And went after him. Jesus is calling. He says, follow me. You must get out of the boat. You must put down your nets. And you must launch out in that vast ocean of people. And follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. What does it mean to follow Jesus? Think about it. What does it mean to follow Jesus? To truly follow Christ means he has become everything. Everything to you. He has become everything. Everyone follows someone. What are you following? The mandate is there. Jesus is following him. Everyone follows something. Maybe a friend, well, his friend, well, his family, selfish desires, fame, you name it, whatever. But we can only follow one thing at a time. God stated that we shall have no other God before him. 
In the book of Deuteronomy, you can find it. 5-7. In the book of Exodus, you can find it. 23. In the book of Mark, you can find it. 12-30. But he says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart. All of it. All of your heart. You see, we can't say I love the Lord and not follow him, but we do. The mandate is there. He's looking for fishermen. He said in Matthew 9, 37, what did Jesus say? The harvest truly is what? Plentiful. But the laborers are what? Few. Jesus looking for laborers. Do you hear his voice? Well, let's follow him. He said, follow me, Minister West. Not your friend, not your family, not your fame, not your car, not your shoes, not your suit, not whatever. <laughs> but he said, follow me, and I will make you what? Fishers of what? Men. He said, therefore, Jesus talking, he said, therefore, pray. 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 Pray to who? Pray the Lord, God Almighty. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into who? Yours, into his harvest. Not yours. But you have to follow him. You cannot follow two people at the same time. You can't do that. He says his harvest. What is your response to God, to Jesus' call? Our world, look around you. Our world is in a turmoil. As crisis escalate, much of the church is not aware to the sounding alarm. The church seemed to be silenced. But the church is the most powerful institution Amen. in this world. But we seem to be silent. But if we follow Jesus, take up our cross how daily and follow him, Today, we are living in very challenging, and you know, challenging and critical times. Crises are escalating at an unprecedented rate. As the body of Christ, we must, we must respond to Jesus' call. Follow me. You hear his voice? Follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. We must get out of the boat and leave your comfort zone. We are a corporate church. So we should have a corporate heart awakening, which is necessary for the church to experience an awakening of the money moving of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is moving. Tens and thousands of people are being saved. Yes, we see evil on every side, but God is still in control. Amen. Romans 10, 15 says, How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? God is looking for followers. He's looking for us to evangelize, for us to go forth. But we must follow him. We must pray to the Lord of the harvest. And we must go in that vast ocean of people who are dying, who are hurting, who are struggling. And they are looking. They are looking for us. They need the word of God for life-changing experiences in their lives. 
And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? And the word of God goes on to say, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who brings glad tidings of good, what? News. See, you see, God is the one who sends. Do you send yourself? Mm -mm. We mess up. We can't do anything without God. Can't do nothing. He said, I am the vine. And you are the what? Branches. He said, if you remain in whom? Me. And I remain in you. He said, you can bear much fruit. Apart from him, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. You can do nothing. Do we have the beautiful feet which Isaiah ascribed to him who brought glad tidings of good news? Isaiah writes of the beautiful feet of him that is the Messiah, Jesus. The him become them and the them are who? Us. The them are us. I thank God. It is our privilege and responsibility to go with beautiful feet to a lost and dying world. To our communities, to our neighborhoods, to the homeless, to the homebound, to the nursing home, to our schools, and much more. People are hurting, and most of them are lost. In Mark 16, 15, there's another mandate from God Almighty, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, been moved by the Holy Spirit. He said, go ye into all the world that's being around and about you. You don't have to go over to China, Japan, or wherever. The world is right there in your backyard, right across the street. In the hospital, go into all the world and preach to every creature. Believe it or not, Jesus is on his way back very, very soon. Because the gospel is getting out. There are those who are listening to Jesus' voice, listening to the mandate that says, get out of the boat. Get out of your comfort zone. And you follow me, for I'm the one that makes you fishers of men. I'm the one that makes you fishers of men. That's what he wants us to do. There's a call for world evangelists. And it just didn't begin now. It goes way back to Abraham. Look in chapter thir- uh, 12, starting with verse 1, 3, when, when God told Abraham to get out from among his family. Sometimes we got to do the same thing, move out. Move out. Stop listening to the naysayers and move out, he says. Abraham moved out. He said, I'm going to make you a nation. I'm going to make you and bless you. To be a blessing to all what? Nations. The same man that is there for us, but it goes way back. Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. You see, when the risen Lord, having been given all authority, hey, all authority belongs to who? Jesus. Hey, that authority is speaking when he says, follow me. That is deep. Follow me. He says, follow me. All authority in heaven and on earth. Spoke the words of Matthew 28, 19, 20 to the 11, to the 11 disciples. He did not address them as some separate little group, but as part of the church 
he was establishing. The work given to them is a work of the whole Christian church. No member, listen to this, if you belong to Jesus and you say, I worship you, I can't sing. <laughs> but all right. But he said, y'all sing, I worship you. All right, y'all, I'm off note, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, if we can say, I worship you, I praise you, I honor you, I magnify you. And then when he said, follow me, follow me, follow me. And then what you, what you do? You sit down and do nothing. We can talk that be beautiful language all day long. But when the rubber meets the roll or the road meets the rubber, whatever you might say, when Jesus said, get out of the boat, he said, get out of your comfort zone. You can sing the sing, you can sing the songs, but you got to walk the walk. So Jesus is what? He's calling. No member of the true. Key in on that word, true. No member of the true church. A congregation of Christians can rightly say, I don't want to make disciples. I don't want to witness for Jesus. I have no ability along those lines. I have a personal dislike to do that sort of stuff. And yet you say, I love your Lord, I honor your Father, but you hear his heartbeat, follow me and I'll make you fishes of men. Jesus says, though, in Matthew 16, 24, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. You got to deny some stuff, especially yourself. Self is your biggest problem. Self. It's in the way. You can't hear Jesus' voice. Self is in the way. Jesus is calling. The mandate is out there. Follow me. Follow me. And I will make you fishes of men. Follow me. The mandate is out there. He said, you have to deny yourself and take up your cross, whatever that cross is, and do what? Follow. <laughs> That's that word again. Follow who? Me. You see, Jesus stated it very plainly. To be my disciple, you have to do those things. You have to deny yourself. You have to be a cross barrier, and you have to follow me. We read Mark 1, 16 through 20, about Simon and Peter and the others that were called. But we see that Simon and Andrew also, and Andrew being his disciple, being the disciple of John the Baptist, they had known Jesus. But now they were being called to a lifestyle of service. We have been called to a lifestyle of what? Service. Service in the army of the Lord. But you can't follow any other guard. You got to deny self. Take up your cross and follow him. Jesus called fishermen. And what were they doing? They were hard working industrial people. Jesus called them to perform the most important task on earth, and that is being fishermen of men. That's an important task. And he did call those that were sitting under the shade tree, drinking lemonade, eating ham.
hamburgers and hot dogs, or whatever the case may be. He didn't. He called hard-working people. These were fishermen. I just tan in their nets. Jesus saw the hard work. Get out of our comfort zone. Get out of our comfort zone and follow him. Thank you, Father. Thank you. What is the call? The call is Matthew 419. Follow me. So they immediately left their nets. That is, as soon as Jesus had called them, they left their worldly employment and followed him. They gave up themselves to his service and became his disciples. They not only left their nets, but they left their fishing boats, their fishing trade, and all that belonged to it, even all their substance. They left it all for the sake of the cross. And also they left their families, their friends, and their acquaintance, which shows what a mighty power went along with words and call of Jesus Christ. That was mighty power behind follow me. They went, they were ready, they were cheerful, and they voluntarily what? Went. That should be our mentality. That should be our heartbeat. Jesus is calling. The mandate has gone forth. When people fish, it is sometimes difficult to get quick results. Right, men is the West? <laughs> you sit there and you wait <laughs> and you wait and you wait. That's where it is when you go fishing for people and you wait. But the result is not left up to you. You plant the seed. God is the one that brings about the increase. So you keep waiting. You keep waiting. You keep waiting and watch what God can do. That's why he said, you follow me. You don't follow yourself and nobody else. <laughs> it comes to naught, doesn't it? And that of God will be successful. Doesn't it? I remember my mom and my dad loved fishing. They would go all the way from, from Georgia all the way down to the Keys in Florida to fish. Yes, I did. And as a little girl, I used to go with mama to sit on the side of the bank. I'd be so glad. And she said, all right, baby, let's go home. <laughs> Sitting there watching nothing. <laughs> well, my mama would sit there all day long and catch nothing. Oh, this poor child was ready to go home. But I sat there out of obedience on that bucket. Hurt my bottom. <laughs> but I sat there. I'm telling you. So I'm saying all that to say this. That's where it is when you go fishing for men. You're not, you might not even see the results. But it's coming because it's in whose hand? Not yours. He just said, follow who? Me. And then he said, I. Not you, but I. I, Pastor Conway. Jesus said, I will make you. To the devil. Fishers of men. That's an attitude we should have. God is so good. Yes, he is. Oh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. He said, I will make you fishers of men. Thank you, Father. And we must. It is like that. Like I just said, it's like that when you call to talk to people about God. It's the same way. You see, but we must respond to the call of Jesus and go to the lost and allow the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the living God, to do the drawing. Jesus said in 15.5, I am the branch, as I said before. I mean, I am the vine, and we are the what? Little branches. So let's stay attached to Jesus and follow him. 
You know what Jesus is looking for? He's looking for ordinary people, you and I, to do what? Extraordinary things. Did Jesus go to the rich? They had a little, I guess, a little substance. But he didn't go to the king and the queen. He went to ordinary whom people like you and I, you know, to follow him and to learn from him. He wants us to help him in his work. It's not our work. It is his work. Because, you see, mission is the great reason for the church's existence. Got to get out there. And those mission fields are right there at home. You see, the mission fields are here. Surely God will send those and prepare those who have to go to China and, and Singapore and everywhere else, you know. But the mission field is right here behind us, in our backyard, in our neighborhoods, in our community, on our jobs, at school, wherever. So our greatest need as a Christian, and every Christian, is a concern for the lost. Without concern, we are not Christ-like. You have no claim to Christ-likeness unless you're concerned about others. And without concern, we are not obeying the scripture, which is the Great Commission. So, in closing, as the church stay on message, as the church stay on mission, as the church stay kingdom focused, <coughs> and as the church stay on the battlefield evangelizing, the word of God accomplishes great things by the power of the Holy Spirit. So again, Matthew 9, 37 through 38, Jesus says this, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. There's a mandate from Jesus. Do you hear his voice? Do you hear the call? Follow me, and I will make you fishers. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the word that went forth today. We just give you glory and honor and praises. For you are a great God and a mighty God and a holy God. You are the creator of all things. You are the sustainer of our lives. You are the love of our souls. And Father, we cannot praise you enough. We cannot praise you enough. So have